Hi there. I will talk about global strategy frameworks today. Global strategy I define as a unique approach to succeeding in international contexts. Uh, now, the field of global strategy, which is linked to international business and sometimes called international business strategy, actually does not have one definition or one framework uh, that could be used. And even the term global strategy is um, sometimes used for a particular view, looking in particular at aggregation uh, of operations across borders and economies of scale. Um, but more broadly, global strategy is any approach to success in international markets. Um, so I'll start perhaps uh, with uh, a framework that is not purely international focused. It's called the Strategy Tripod, uh, authored by Mike Pank, um, a famous strategy scholar, both in the fields of management and international business and global strategy. This framework looks at three prongs, three um, underlying perspectives or views that can help you to analyze uh, most of the strategies in international or local context. So it's an industry-based view, uh, focusing on analyzing our industry structure, your positioning uh, in uh, a particular industry, or perhaps all, all also looking across industries. Um, then a, there's uh, the resource-based view as the second prong of the framework, uh, looking at uh, organizational resources and capabilities that help you to compete against other companies in uh, the industry, so you're not just thinking about positioning yourself against others, uh, but you're thinking about your internal um, um, resources, whether tangible or intangible, and capabilities that you build as an organization to succeed. Proponents of this view are uh, Jay Barney, um, for example, the capabilities view, um, David Tease, the dynamic capabilities, um, and knowledge-based view is, is often related to uh, this umbrella of, of the resource-based um, um, view. Now, the final view that Mike Peng actually is a quite keen proponent of is the institution-based view. And um, so in particular for emerging economies and international strategies, it's important to consider cross-country differences in institutional structures uh, and also within country differences, organizational and, and individual differences in, in cultures and, uh, and various institutional uh, measures and arrangements. Um, so these three prongs of the strategy tripod can help us, uh, but global strategy field has come up with many other uh, kind of more actually international focused um, frameworks. Um, so the concept of the transnational strategies is quite quite influential and has been for, for decades. Um, it's pretty much kind of merging two views. One was geared towards the global integration of operations, having large scale plants, quite uniform products, pushing them to world markets, companies such as Coca-Cola have traditionally uh, expanded that way or McDonald's. Um, and then the other view was to adapt the operation. So that was sometimes called the multi-domestic or perhaps multinational strategy. Now the transnational strategy tries to merge all of those, both of these aspects, um, uh, aggregate some uh, functions, uh, but perhaps by regions or have certain uh, centers of excellence worldwide. I think one of the key characteristics of this strategy is the shared worldwide learning and, and knowledge um, exchange and, and, and management. So you're not just trying to be adaptive to a particular market uh, and have a really tailored product to uh, countries such as Uruguay or, uh, or China, um, but uh, um, you uh, are also not having just one product uh, for, for all the markets. So, so you're somewhere in the middle, uh, you're not completely centralized, you're not completely decentralized. Uh, so that's the transnational strategy. Um, now, another important concept is uh, Pankaj Gemawad's uh, AAA triangle. Um, so it, it builds um, on, on uh, the transnational concept. Uh, the triple A's mean aggregation. Uh, so as you expand internationally, you will not have production facility or R&D facility just, uh, just at home in, in the headquarters or in the home country, but you will um, you will uh, aggregate some of the operations from foreign countries that you might have into uh, larger scale operations. So that's the aggregation part, kind of the economies of scale and the global integration of, 
of the desperate operations that you might have uh, across countries, especially as you acquire. Um, now, you also uh, need to adapt so that in addition to aggregation, uh, there's adaptation strategy, so you need to be adaptive. And then instead of the, the learning part of transnational, um, uh, the AAA triangle looks at arbitrage, taking advantage of differences across countries. Pankaj Gemavad also has a framework of the, uh, the cage, the cultural, administrative, geographic, and economic differences. So actual kind of tapping into what's different about countries. It could be just kind of labor costs. It could be different talent uh, pools in different areas, could be uh, some location-based uh, factors. And so that takes us to uh, another two key terms and perhaps a framework uh, um, that Alain Verbeck, uh, the editor of the Journal of International Business Studies, put forward in his, um, uh, in his book, International Business Strategy. So a lot of terminology in global strategy, strategy looks at firm-specific advantages, uh, things like brands or technologies, and then you're trying to leverage those across borders. Okay, so those are international transferable firm-specific advantages that are unique to your firm, uh, kind of linked to the uh, capabilities perspective and the resource base view about idiosyncratic, unique, uh, unique assets uh, or resources that companies have to compete internationally. Now you have these firm-specific advantages. Uh, but also in an international arena, there are some advantages bound to location and to particular countries or clusters or areas, regions. So those are location bound. Um, for example, you know, there's top talent in the Boston area in the US with uh, Harvard and MIT, Boston University, Boston College. So um, in, 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 in other countries, you have really, really high class manufacturing capabilities. Um, in China or in Slovakia, there's very good uh, um, car production cluster where really uh, you have uh, some of the best uh, um, manufacturing workers for the car industry. So there are certain location bound advantages that are, um, that are important. And then your international expansion might tap into those pools of, of, um, of location bound advantages. And you kind of combine or recombine your resources and capabilities in a multinational network to tap into location advantages and leverage your firm specific advantages. So to finish off, uh, we started this discussion with, uh, with the general framework, with uh, the strategy tripod. So we could perhaps end it with uh, just pointing to the fact that any global strategy also needs to follow uh, a broad strategy process. Uh, so you need to start with your mission and vision uh, and then um, um, set objectives and goals, identify various strategic alternatives to strategic analysis, pick uh, a strategic option um, that uh, will help you to uh, eventually execute the strategy and then evaluate it. Um, so this strategy process is underlying um, uh, these more specific uh, global strategy frameworks. Um, so thank you uh, for, uh, for listening um, and you can check out uh, some of my uh, other videos uh, about global strategy that tackle some of these issues in more depth.